uh, just as the market opened. With that in mind, folks, let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad. You can read Teddy's Tiger Forex Report every Monday, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, but this past Monday, he had an awesome webinar. You can check it out under the Services tab, Japanese Candlestick Patterns, Stock and Option Strategies with our man Teddy Kegstad. He did an hour in there. We had a bunch of great attendees on Monday. That webinar is archived. You can check that out under the Services tab, only 97 bucks. Uh, Teddy Kegstad, great webinar Monday, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Tom. Um, for those that didn't catch it, Teddy, I was listening in the hour. You walked over, of course, candlestick patterns, but you talked. I loved how you were setting up, you know, different ways to trade some of the patterns that you were talking about in there. Could mm -hmm. you just give the listeners because it's so great. One of the great things about this course, folks, is that it's going to be good forever, Teddy. That was something that, you know, it's not time stamped. You're teaching them trading methodologies in there. People can sign up anytime they want. Go over that hour. It's archived. Could you just give people a little glimpse now that you've done the webinar? It's up there. It's archived for anyone that wants to sign up for just $97. Could you talk a little bit maybe about what you talked about Monday for all the attendees you had in there um, for that hour for Ken? Yeah, please. Sure. Well, we didn't just talk about the uh, just the Japanese candlestick patterns, but we actually gave you the, the ability to figure out what your risk areas would be, where your entry levels are, where your target price is for the moves that you're expecting to ha have happen. And then we broke down what kind of different trades you could do, whether it was being long stock, long calls, taking on different types of uh, spreads also. And then also looking at the pricing of those things and the differences to figure out which gave the best reward to risk ratio for the trades as well. So we would show how highlight some were valid in many of the, like for instance, we had situations where four different types of trades were valid for a particular signal. Then we had the same signal on a different stock where only two of the uh, trades would actually be viable because of the pricing. You know, so And those were things I think that those dynamics were covered very well during that webinar. And that was the main focus of what we were trying to do. And that's evergreen. That means that you can use this not just today, not just next month. I've been using this for decades and it will work for decades to come. So. That's the word I was looking for, evergreen. Couldn't find it, man. I appreciate it. Exactly, and it will be. Um, so check it out, folks. It's right under services. It's 97 bucks. It's an awesome webinar. And I, I loved how you were doing those, you know, because there's a million ways that you can trade something, right? But I just loved how you were setting up those theoreticals off of the candlestick patterns. With that in mind, we get to the markets, man. How about uh, let's kick it off with maybe yields? What do you want to talk about today? We got action, man. The dollar index, we got the 10-year above 4.2. What are you looking at in this market right now? Well, I know the the Forex Report uh, subscribers have to be happy. We've been nailing these levels, and no, this week is no different. Uh, we, I was calling for higher yields over the, over the few, first few sessions. Here we are making new move lows, higher yields on the uh, weekly, daily, and monthly basis. So I'm happy where they're at. You know, I mean, I've been saying that for a long time that, you know, we've had all these rate hikes, and we're still above where we were last October, you know. And now that we know that there's uh, going to probably be a pause maybe a little bit longer and I thought <clears throat> I still see another one to two rate hikes before the year is out just because I don't think the numbers are even if they they like what they've been seeing they're still not that great you know yeah. so I mean the good thing is we don't really have any numbers now until really after Labor Day so I, I would be very cautious as we hit these right now these new highs and yields I think we're gonna start to find support pretty soon and then we're gonna probably go into a digestive phase which you can already see is happening in like the euro uh, euro US dollar to pound dollar and the US dollar Swiss the only ones that are really trending and I think will continue to trend over the next couple of weeks are probably the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, because their currencies are just collapsing as because of they fundamentally are a disaster, you know. So, um, and I think that's gonna that's gonna be the main thing you're gonna see over the next couple of weeks as we head towards Labor Day and the holiday trade here. Yeah, pretty cool. I was jumping through those lines as you were talking about it, and and I would somewhat agree in terms. I was reading an article today, Teddy, and it's talking about just the the probability priced in for a hike at their next meeting in September versus the probability of their next following meeting after that, which I believe is at the end of October, October 31st, November 1st, and actually a higher probability right now for that October, uh, November meeting, which would kind of make sense because it seems like we're lining into September. Maybe they can give it one more pause at least. They pause once, they hike. Maybe they can pause. The, the data hasn't been too alarming, but we got a long way to go till 2%, man. Um, so the market may be saying, maybe we get one more as we come into the beginning of November. What do you think of crude prices, man? I, I was talking about it on the program. I'm not sure I heard you. I filled up my gas tank uh, for the first time in a while, 70 bucks. 
this past week, we got higher prices in crude sitting at $81. What do you think of that crude price? I did the same yesterday. I'm like, wait a minute. A week ago, I spent 75 cents less a gallon. <laughs> Is it, I, it hit me. 70 bucks for a full tank. I said, that's that's so, that's a rarity. And I was pretty low, but yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, um, well, we had a sell signal that was triggered in crude oil. We had that in the Forex report. And now today, um, where crude is at right now, yeah, we're just below the uh, the, sell, the sell entry level. So um, I like the, the, the high that's in place right now. I think that's going to hold probably for the next like week or two. And I would say that you can probably see crude get back to that like $79, $80 um, level. And I think that would be a good, like if especially if you're fading this rally right now, if you're going to trade to the short side, that would be a good place to start to take profit or at least definitely tighten up your stops. I think that the oil could get back down to like 76, 77 bucks a barrel and find a support there. Uh, you know, I don't think that this, the, the bull trend, I'm bullish crude, but I'm not aggressively bullish. I don't think we're going to have an overdone just runaway rally. That's not what I'm looking for. I would be very surprised. You know, I think especially if yields start to pull back and what have you, I don't see oil really pressing it. Now, if yields really scream higher, well, that would be a different story because the cost of carryover function starts to kick in and then that could drive crude, keep crude up in the mid 80s to $90 level. Nice. Yeah. And I had it up as you were talking about it. And boy, it was quite a trip from 67 bucks up to 85. So it shouldn't be too ridiculous if we get a little bit of a pullback. Right. I got the 382 on this chart of just that run, Teddy, from, from 67 bucks. What is that? Late mm -hmm. late June. Um, 382 yes. is still 78 bucks, man. So that's quite a run that we had um, in that crew contract. Uh, when, when you look at the next Fed meeting, Teddy, so are you like as a forex trader right in the dollar index you're, you're basing things technically and i know it's a difficult question i mean even as i'm trying to surmise it um but at the dollar index and you've taught us so many times about the different forex pairings that go into this but we just got back all of that move lower in the dollar index from july 6th i was looking at it basically right you go from 103 mm -hmm. and change down to 99 we're sitting at 103 and change again what do you think about the dollar index in general at this exact price limit where we're kind of right back to where that move lower began at uh, well, I think that the dollar index now is going to have a little trouble climbing because as long as the euro, um, the euro U.S. dollar and the pound dollar, especially if they stay in a sideways range trade, you know, it, it's going to be the Aussie and the and the New Zealand dollar, their weakness that really gives boost to the dollar index. So do they have weight? Yes. Are they that strong? No. So I think that would mean that possibly if those other markets go if they stay sideways and don't get bearish um, or uh, bullish in, in their own right I mean uh, then I think the dollar index is going to have a tough time it'll stay positive but I wouldn't look for it to climb very much higher okay that was a quick nine minutes man Teddy I appreciate the time as always Thank great you. webinar on Monday man we had some awesome feedback I appreciate it there was a That's lot of great. words you jammed into that Monday webinar <laughs> and uh, have a great week man we'll talk to you next Wednesday thanks Tommy you have a great one Teddy